Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert your regular heating system into a combi boiler system. So, what we would call a combi conversion. So, there's a couple of things you need to consider when you're converting to a combi boiler. You need to take in consideration the incoming water main. So, you need to make sure you've got a good flow rate normally between 10 and 16 litres per minute is what a combi boiler can produce hot water at so you need to make sure really the minimum you've got is one bar pressure and at least 10 litres of hot water per minute you need to make sure that your existing pie work is in good or okay condition for um, adjusting it to a high pressure so if you've already got uh, problems with your existing pipe work or it looks in poor condition then you really do need to speak to your plumber or your gas engineer before converting and thirdly you need to make sure that your gas supply is adequate enough um, to power the new combi boiler so quite often we have to update the gas supply uh, make it increase it in size so it will provide enough gas um, to power the boiler which we're going to be doing on this install so as you can see I am when I come to quote this job, this boiler has been shut down. It's an old knee heat, very old, good for its time. So this is what we're going to be taking out. And what I'll do, I'll run through with you how we're going to do it step by step. And yeah, hopefully give you a bit more information on how it's done. So the first step really is identifying what all these pipes are and getting them labelled up. So we've identified which ones are hot water zone and which ones are heating zone. So the hot water zone, which goes up to the hot water cylinder, we're no longer going to need. So normally these will be located up in the airing cupboards. So what I'm going to do next is get the system drained down. So we're going to be getting the central heating drained down and also the hot and cold water inside the hot water cylinder and then it will allow us to then cut into the pipe work and commence the decommissioning. So we're quite fortunate here, we've got a sink located right next to us so we can drain it away quite easily. So I'm up in the airing cupboard now. You can see here that traditionally where the zone valves would be located, there actually isn't any. So all we've got is a flow and return coming into the airing cupboard. So in terms of decommissioning it and converting it into a combi system, all we really need to do is get these pipe work, get this pipe work out and cap the return so there will no longer be anything flowing through the flow pipe. Also, because the cold water distribution from the cold water tank is going to be mains fed, I need to identify which one is the cold water main and which one is the supply to the bathrooms and link them together. So normally I would use an isolation valve so they can isolate in the future if they need to do any maintenance. As well as that, the hot water pipe that's coming off the top of the cylinder, I need to cap that at low level. So what we'll be doing is we'll be teeing in the combi boiler down to the hot water distribution pipe work in the garage and almost backfilling the system. So Really, this is just a strip out in here, and the majority of the work is going to be above the boiler. So, unfortunately, the drain off from this one is faulty. So, to drain the domestic hot water that's in the hot water cylinder, I'm having to siphon it out. So, if ever you get this issue, the cold water pipe that supplies the cylinder, you need to drain the hot water down as far as you can via the taps. So, that will then leave the hot water level to the top of the cylinder and then the cold water supply that's feeding it you need to make sure you cut it above the first T so this hot water draw off pipe here what you don't want to do is start siphoning out below here because otherwise you're going to get very wet so as you can see here I've just cut it uh, about 200 mil above and then from here I can siphon it out and quite honestly that makes the drain down process quite a lot faster. Right, so I've got the hot water cylinder removed now and I just want to show you the flow and return pipe that went into the coil of the cylinder. So these two pipes are now going to be redundant. So in a normal 
vented system, you would usually have the pump and the zone valves up in the airing cupboard. So what you would need to do is join the boiler flow pipe, so the flow pipe coming up into the airing cupboard, disconnect all the pipe works going into the cylinder coil, take out the three port valve or the two port valve, and then actually join it to the central heating flow out of the zone valve or three-way valve, so normally indicated as A. So these two pipes now, we can clearly see them down by the boiler and I'm quite happy to just cap them. So the reason we cap them is just in case we make a mistake or these are actually linked up to potentially the towel rail or a bypass radiator, but these two should be good to go um, completely, but we'll leave them capped until it's all fully commissioned. So this T piece here, this would have been the hot water drawer off that was on the top of the cylinder. So what you need to do at some point on the system is cap the hot water. So traditionally, this pipe here would be the vent pipe that goes up and over um, your cold water tank up in the loft, but there is another ensuite here. So I just need to jump up into the loft and confirm that this pipe works not feeding another bathroom. Okay, I'm up in the loft now. I've just made a start disconnecting the tank. So. What I need to be mindful of is all the pipe work that rises up from the airing cupboard up into the loft doesn't tee off before it gets to the tanks. What I don't want to do is cap it all in the airing cupboard and realise it was actually feeding another bathroom. So these are the rises here that come up through the airing cupboard and then I've just got to follow them all back and make sure none of them tee off before they go to the tank. So. I have identified that the cold water main actually does tee off and I believe that's going to an electric shower. So the cold water main, I'm going to have to cap up here. So it's that 15 mil pipe there, but the rest, they're all good to come out. So the best thing to do is cut them as far back as you can. So you don't want any dead legs at all. The actual vent and the cold free feed from the F&E tank went all the way down to the boiler anyway. So pretty much all of that's going to be dead. So yeah, what I'm going to do is get all this out and uh, attempt to get the tanks out too. Okay, so I've cut all the tanks out now, uh, wet fact all the remaining water that was in the bottom out, uh, removed all the rest of the pipe work. So the only pipe that's left is the cold water main that feeds the shower in a separate ensuite. So down now in the airing cupboard, I can connect the old cold vented uh, distribution pipe work to the cold main and then that will pressurise the cold throughout the house so just remember any redundant pipe work like that um, if you're not going to rip it fully out you need to cap it so if you don't cap it even if it doesn't become alive any residual water might eventually come out okay so we're down in the airing cupboard again now and this is the conversion part of the job so what I've done is the cold water main, which is this one here, I've teed off of it and I've gone straight into the cold water feed from the old water tank in the loft. So strongly recommend putting a lever valve on it so you can test the bathrooms, etc. independently without just turning on the main stopcock. So that's what this here is for. This feed here, this is the hot water. So what you want to do is you don't want to give yourself too much of a dead leg. So I've capped it pretty close to that T there, just above the clip. So at the moment, the hot water is a closed circuit. There's, it's not open anywhere at all. So when we tee in for the combi boiler, that will then backfill this part of the system and provide hot water to all the hot water outlets. So we're back down in the garage now. All the conversion part of the job is done. And Bailey's been busy getting the boiler off the wall. So he's now identified the pipes that we need to use. So the flow and return for the central heating and he's getting the flow and return and the boiler frame onto the wall and all piped up. These are the pipes that we've identified that we won't be using anymore. So again, it's still important that you cap them so you don't get any residual water coming out. So we've got the old vent, so that would have went all the way up to the old header tank in a loft. We've got here the hot water flow, which would have been the coil to the cylinder. And we've also got the cold feed from the header tank. So obviously that's gone now and redundant. So these three are all capped, so you can notice now we've got no zone valves at all, so we literally are just tapped into the flow for the central heating and the return. So the hot water return on the coil is capped in the floor, so we don't need to worry about that.
So now we've got the heating pipe work in place, we need to tee into the existing hot and cold pipe work. So we're fortunate enough to have a sink right next to us in the garage. So what we're doing is we're gonna run some 15 mil along the bottom of the boiler behind this unit. And then we can nick the cold and hot feed from underneath the basin. Right, so this is where I've teed in for the hot and cold feeds. Um, you can see it only has to be in 15 mil because that's what the supply and the distribution pipe work is coming out of the combi boiler. So you don't need to worry too much about joining on to 22 mil. Um, it's not really going to increase um, your flow rate at all now that it's all controlled via the water main. The boiler can only produce, I think this one's 13 and a half litres per minute. So yeah, it's as simple as that. Just tee into the hot and cold and then cap the outlets um, from the old cylinder. And yeah, it's good to go. Right, so where possible, you always want to try and keep your condensed pipe internal. Obviously, it's not always possible to do that, so you might have to run it externally. But we're, again, we're quite lucky here because we've got the basin pretty much right next to the boiler. So we've just dropped it down into an inch and a half T and reduced it down to the overflow pipe. Okay, so we've got the pipe work all piped up to the boiler now. We've teed into the hot and cold underneath the basin. We've increased the gas supply to 22 mil. So we're finishing off for the day. We've got the cold main now running through to the bathrooms. Everything seems okay at the moment, which is great. And we've capped the gas um, on the manifold here so the customer can use the hob during the night. So yeah, when we return tomorrow, we'll get the boiler on the wall and then also do the wiring and do the flush. Okay, it's day two now, we're back at a combi conversion. The boiler's on the jig, and we've just got the jobs to finish off our uh, get the boiler flue on, uh, flush the central heating system, uh, wire in the heating controls, and get it all operational. So, what we have noticed is the incoming cold water mains pressure is really, really high, so we're gonna have to put a pressure reducing valve on the incoming main. So, sometimes what can happen, if your cold water main is too good, it will actually go through the combi boiler too fast, and you'll find it won't actually reach its full domestic hot water temperature. So, as well as getting very wet when you're running the basin taps, um, because it's splashing. So what we're gonna do, we'll put a pressure reducing valve on the incoming cold water main, and then that'll just balance the system out a little bit better. So here's the incoming cold water main. It's only 15 mil, but it is running at about 25 liters per minute, um, and it's getting all the way up to about five bar. So what we're gonna do is install a pressure reducing valve downstairs here, and then we can balance the system out and make it a bit more usable for the family that lives here. So just to let you know, the boiler we're installing is the Worcester Bosch 8000 Life. It's 35 kilowatts. So this house has got one main bathroom, one ensuite, so it should be more than capable of running two showers if required. Um, pretty new out this model, and this is probably about the fifth or sixth one we've done since they've been released, and yeah, they're very, very good, and definitely up there with the top combis on the market at the moment. So the good thing about these boilers is it's got an internal filling loop key, which is this blue lever here, so rather than having to use a flathead screwdriver or turn two black levers, you just pull this lever down so we'll get it filled up and bled through. So we've got the boiler all piped up now and we've just bled through all the radiators. The pressure gauge is holding up fine so we know that the existing pipe work is okay at the moment. What we're going to do is we'll fire it up and put a cleaning chemical inside the system and flush all the radiators through. So 
it's imperative that when you install any new boiler that you clean the system out. So either a hot flush or with a magna cleanse or a power flush. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We'll leave the chemical in there for at least a good hour, two hours running while we've got time. And also we can finish off all the snagging jobs. We've paired the boiler with a hive active heating. So I find the hive actually really good, um, especially because the stat itself um, is wireless and it runs on battery so there's no hard wiring to the thermostat at all and a customer can just keep it wherever they would like so what we'll do is we normally when we're flushing we'll put the boiler on chimney sweep mode so 100% and then that just allows the pump to be at full rate and also we can get the full rate of the flame. So the boiler's all up and running now, the system's working correctly, everything's been flushed through. Really happy with how this job went. Hope you found this video interesting and hopefully it's given you a bit of an insight on how to convert your regular heating system into a combi boiler setup. Um, if you would please like, comment and subscribe, we'd really appreciate it and hopefully see you on the next one.